Well, hello there, Tom Green coming back at you with some Edge Animate goodness. And today's goodness involves the new release of Edge Animate CC. Yes, Animate is now part of the Creative Cloud. There is a lot of goodness that has been added to Animate, and I will be showing the motion paths, CSS filters, a new addition to the color tools, direct hooks into the Edge web fonts, and we start with a change to the interface. If you look at the layers in the Timeline and Elements panels, you'll see that they have been color-coded. What has always bothered me about them is the default colors are pretty close to each other, so you really, at a quick glance, can't tell one layer from the other. Now you can do something about it by simply clicking on a layer color and choosing a new one. And you notice that this new color is not only reflected in the Timeline, but also in the Elements panel. There has also been a much requested addition to how colors are used in Animate. What I'm going to do here is I'm just going to draw out a simple box and have decided to fill it with a linear gradient. So I'm just going to come here to the color panel, open up the gradients, and I've got a linear gradient and a radial gradient that I can add. And what I would like to do is to have this box use the colors inside this big flower in the background. Normally, what I would do is try and approximate the color. Now I can sample it directly because inside the color panel is a little eyedropper tool. So if I click the eyedropper tool and roll over, you can see not only can I see the color that's being sampled, but you also see it in that big circle around it. So I'm going to use this as the first ramp color up at the top. And then I'm going to select the second color in the ramp and I'm going to pick a color that is a little bit lighter. I'm going to pick that one right there. I like that pink right about there. And I've now got a wonderful, wonderful gradient. And you'll notice too that the gradient in the box immediately reflects the choices I've made in the panel. If I want to save the gradient, all I have to do is to click this little plus sign here and it's added to the swatches. And the great thing about this is, is it stays put and I can reuse it. Once I'm finished with it, I can just get rid of it by simply pulling it off of the swatches. Or if I want to put it back, just click and back in it goes. Now this is great for buttons and other interface elements. Another neat addition to the lineup that you may have missed during the public release phase of the uh, application is Animate now has direct hooks into the Edge web fonts. So if I select the text tool and click once inside the gradient box here, I can add in the words Spring Chorus. And you can see that the words are also in the box. And I'll just go move them up a little bit here. There we go. And now to apply a web font, all I have to do is come to the text area of the Properties panel, click the plus sign, and you'll notice that the Edge Web Fonts interface opens up. This opens up if you have a direct connection to the Internet, either through wireless or Ethernet. And all I have to do now is take a look at the various fonts that are available to me. And the great thing about Web fonts is they are a collection of open source, royalty-free fonts from a variety of sources. I select a font, and I think in this one here I'm going to use Actor. And you can see that it is instantly visible inside the composition. If I like that font, I'm going to click the Add Font button, and you can see that not only is it showing up in the text pop-down, so I can choose the font there, but it also appears over in the Font panel. Okay, I'm going to get rid of the text in the box here because I want to show you another feature. And that feature is the selection of CSS filters that comes packaged with the application. Just keep in mind, these are the CSS3 filters and not all browsers can render them. And when I look at this composition, I notice I have two very strong images behind the figurines. I've got this big flower here and these blossoms. And I decide to add a little depth of field by using a blur. So I'm going to select the flower in the Elements panel, which is this background image here. And I'm just going to collapse down some of the uh, pa panels in the uh, Properties panel. 
and I'm going to open up the filters panel. And these are the CSS3 filters. You get invert, hue, rotate, contrast, saturate. I can turn it into a sepia tone if I want. But the one I want to use is blur. And to apply it, all I have to do is select the element and just click and drag to get the effect I want. Now the problem with this technique is you really have no fine grain control over the blur, short of moving the slider to the right or the left. You'll notice that I gave it a yank and the value changed to 25. If you need finer control, try, try this. I'm going to select the blossoms layer, which is the branch full of uh, cherry blossoms in front of the flower, and this time I'm going to scrub across the values for the blur, and you can see that I can apply a very small value just by clicking and dragging across. Now you may have noticed that there is a shadow filter here, and there's also a shadow property. So what's the difference between the two? Well, let's take a look. I'm going to select the chorus, of, which is this group of figurines here, and I'm going to throw a drop shadow in behind them. So I'm going to select black as the color of the shadow, and then I'm just going to apply a little bit of an X blur to it. Okay, so put the blur on the X axis, and of course, a little bit of shadow, blur, so it blends in. And you can see that I've got a nice little drop shadow going here. Now if I apply the shadow to it, okay, I'm going to just select the chorus again. Notice I select it this time in the timeline. And come up to the shadow properties and twirl it down and turn it on. And I'm just going to give it a big value here so you can see. You'll notice that the shadow here in the panel is applied to the outside edges of the element. Now there are two choices, the outside edge of the element or the inside edge. You can see it goes inside. So the difference is really quite, simp quite simple to understand. The shadow property is applied to the shape of the element, whereas the filter is applied to the content in the element. In the next video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a really neat new feature of Animate CC, and that is the inclusion of motion paths. They are really neat. I'll see you there.